Welcome to another episode of In the Weeds with Wellspring, a deep dive into best practices for leveraging digital media to help business owners grow. At Wellspring Business Solutions, we get to the root of your marketing problems and implement solutions that will help your business thrive. And now, here's your podcast. Hello and welcome everyone to the In the Weeds with Wellspring podcast. I'm your host, Daryl, and today I have the distinct privilege of getting talk, getting to talk to the lady herself, Nikki Wittick, the founder and CEO of Wellspring, Wellspring Business Solutions. Nikki, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Daryl? I'm doing great. I'm awesome. doing great. So, so cool to get a chance to, to spend some time with you. Thank you. I'm excited to do this. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I always love to start these out just for those that aren't as familiar yet with your business. If you could just give us sort of that high level overview of what you do to help your clients, because I know that's what you're all about, helping your customers succeed. Absolutely. So um, Wellspring is a digital marketing agency. So we help um, both B2B and B2C. So business to business, business to consumer, get more leads and build stronger relationships with a full suite of digital marketing services. So whether that's, um, you know, pay-per-click ads, social media, video, content marketing, blogging, email marketing. So we offer a whole suite of digital um, services that um, help our clients build relationships and get seen. That's so you're you're kind of a, a one-stop shop for your clients. They don't need to work with a whole bunch of different folks. You can basically help them with the whole platform. That is correct, and that is something that um, you know when I first started my business, I was only offering a few services, and so um, I've expanded so that my customers don't need to go. Um, other places to get all of the services and kind of piecemeal their marketing together. So there's definitely a huge advantage in that. Yeah, there, it's a huge benefit because you understand their needs, you understand their go-to-market strategy, and when you can put together a comprehensive program, it just it just works better. So awesome. And well, to make the lives of business owners easier, right? Because <laughs> the more that we can take off their plates, the better that you know, the better that they uh, succeed in their business. Exactly. Exactly. Well, that, that is that's a great overview. Um, I know we're going to dive into a couple of the, the, the leading programs right now that you're seeing great results with. But um, I know you have sort of a special offer for those that um, are, are joining the podcast. You want to give that a little bit of a tease? I know we're going to tell them about it at the end. Yeah, so it's it's an audit um, that will basically help a, a company figure out whether they're getting found on search engines. It's huge. I've I've had so many clients find it really really valuable, and it's completely complimentary. Awesome. Good. Good. So we'll we'll definitely touch on that. So let's let's step back a, a half a half a step here and talk about you know how did you get get your start in in this business it's you know really i always find these stories fascinating because it's it you know how you got your start also tells us a lot about you as a businesswoman and and i just love i love to hear these stories yeah so uh it, it was a little bit by accident um so my background was actually um for many years i worked in uh, promotional products so branded merch and you know swag per se whatever people like to call it um so i had worked as both an account manager in sales um company stores e-commerce for the promotional products industry um so i worked on more of the marketing side with products versus digital marketing right um so i had done that for about 10 years um, i experienced some burnout um but i liked the industry which seems a little <laughs> it doesn't always make sense right it's like i love the industry but i wanted to get out um so basically what happened is is i kind of jumped ship from the sales portion of um, the promotional products industry wanted to stay in that industry so what i did is um i started a i started out as a virtual assistant so wellspring started as a va business so i was helping promotional products companies with a myriad of services, right? So support, admin, some some uh, marketing, um, you know, you name it. I was helping both promotional products distributors and suppliers with VA services. Um, so if I backtrack a little bit, a couple of those services that my clients asked me to take on were email marketing. So newsletters, marketing, email marketing campaigns, um, social media, um, also as blogging as well. 
Um, so I kind of fell into that, right? It wasn't anything that I was ever intending to do. Um, but as I did it more, as more clients asked me to do it, I started seeing a pattern um, where the things that I was doing, right, were actually getting results and my clients were getting excited. And then I was getting excited and I was like, wait, hang on a second. There's something to this, right? Um, so uh, basically after that, I kind of decided to just really focus more on the marketing side. Um, so Wellspring kind of evolved more into a digital marketing business than a VA business. So I phased out um, some of those support tasks that I was doing for my clients. And now I've evolved into a, you know, full service digital marketing agency. So awesome. yeah, it, it just kind of happened, which is awesome. And I love it. And I wouldn't change a thing. Well, you know, the cool thing about that to me is, is you're someone that has rolled up your sleeves, has done the work yourself, you know what works and what doesn't, you've driven results. And now you're, you're playing a more strategic role in helping more clients. And I know we were we were chatting and you said one of your favorite marketing quotes is if social media is the cocktail party, then email marketing is let's meet up for coffee. You know, it's the original one to one channel. Can you talk a little bit more about about that? Yeah. So so social media is it's a way to help your it, it's a way to help you build your brand. Right. Um, but one of the things that um, I, I see people kind of complain about the most with social media is they're like, well, I don't, I don't get, I don't get a lot of um, results from my social media. And the biggest thing that I find is, is they're, they're, they're not taking their followers from social media to email marketing, right? So when I'm, when they say social media is the cocktail party, right? I, I social media is like the introduction. And then I really feel like there's a missing step where they need to be taking their followers over to email marketing, which is that sit down. It's the let's get to know each other type channel, right? Where you're building more value and trust and relationship. Like if you're at a networking event, right? You're, you're doing handshakes, but you don't really, really get to know that person or that person's business until you have a meeting with them. You sit down with them, whether it's over, you know, a, a digital or for coffee or whatever, right? So, so I think there's that missing component sometimes when people aren't seeing results from their social media, they're missing that email marketing piece. So that's kind of what that means to me. Um, and that's why I like to use that a lot um, because it's a real life scenario, right? You know, yeah. the cocktail yeah. party, you know, the sit down, the networking event versus the one-on-one -on -one meeting. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that makes a ton of sense. The two products work well together, but email really lets you go in depth. You can share a lot more information than you can in a quick social post. So it makes it makes a ton of sense. And and when a customer opts in to receive an email from you, that just says even more that they want to learn more about your company and they want to see that regular communication in another format, which is great. So awesome. Absolutely. They're basically telling you, yes, I find what you're saying interesting on social. Let me find out more. Right. So they're basically telling you, I like what you've had to say give me more information, right? Perfect. So it's a really good opportunity for you to really um, build your relationship with your with your followers, with your subscribers via email. Nice, nice. Now, here's where I usually insert the, and, and you teed me up perfectly when you said, tell me more, right? Tell, Give us an idea, something about Nikki that we might not know about that we will, that our audience will find interesting. So this is like a commercial break in the middle of our, our product discussion. Oh boy. Okay. Oh gosh. So many things. Does the fact that I'm really klutzy make a difference? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm very accident prone, but that's personal. Um, so I have an interesting story that kind of relates to my business a little bit. Um, so I used to, I used to be a runner. I used to run like half marathons, right? So I've actually run a couple in my life, a bunch of 5Ks, things like that. So there was one instance where um, I went to a local, uh, it was supposed to be a 5K local race at a park called Lapham Peak. So if you're from this area, you know, it's very hilly, it's beautiful. Um, but I, so I, I signed up for the 5K and you start the 5K at the same time that there's half marathoners running, right? I wasn't doing the half marathon that day. Um, you have your bib number. And so the race started and you get to a point at the top of a hill where if you're doing the half marathon, there's a guide at the top of the hill, right? And they 
um, they point you in one direction if you're doing the half marathon and they point you in another direction if you're doing the 5k. So the gentleman at the top of the hill pointed me to the left and so I ran to the left. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I feel like, I'm like, gosh, I, I've been running for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and and there's some people around me and, and I turned and I looked at them and I said, um, are, are you running the 5K or the half? And they said, oh, oh we're the half. And I said, oh, um, I said, what mile are, are we on? And she said, mile eight. And I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so at this point, I've run eight miles. I didn't even realize that now my dude was in really good shape at the time. So to say that I didn't even know that I had gotten to mile eight is actually a good thing. <laughs> um, but at that point, I'm like, okay, I'm halfway through, right? So if you know, a half marathon is about 13.1 miles. Um, so if I'm at eight, right, uh, I've got five Might miles. Well to get, yes, I've got five miles to get to the finish or I go back and it's eight back. So I'm like, well, I guess I'm running a half marathon today. <laughs> that's so, hilarious. Yeah, so that's my story about accidentally running my second half marathon. But for me, it was one of those things where uh, when I relate it to business, it's like, you know, you, you, you get to what, you know, a path, right? And you kind of have to figure out which way to go. So I like to use that scenario when I talk about my business and when I was kind of looking to make a change and what direction I, I needed to go. And it, it, it just so happened kind of naturally, right? So although it's a funny story, I like to relate it to my business. Yeah. Yeah. You know what, what they say? It's, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. And, and you yes. were in it for the long haul. So literally. <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's swing back here to email marketing. So when you think about giving advice for someone that's just getting started with email, um, because maybe they don't even have the, a, a list built yet. I mean, what are some right. of the, the best practices that you, you share with your customers? Yeah. So, well, best practices are really, really important. I think that people don't understand how much is involved with best practices, but let me back up a little bit. So um, people think you need a huge list, right? In order to get, you know, get results from email marketing. That's not, that's not really true, right? It's not the size of the list that counts. It's the people on the list. So like I was saying with social media, when people join your list, it's people that have expressed interest in your business right so whether you have 30 people or 3,000 people on your list those are people that have told you they want to be there right so it's a huge opportunity for you to build relationship build value um so it's really don't don't focus on the number focus on the the content and the story and the value that you're pushing out through email right um the other thing with best practices is i think a lot of people don't realize they just think they can just send an email and it's it's great and it's going to get to the inbox but the truth is is that one in five emails actually makes it to the inbox what does that mean that means basically your email might be going to spam it could be going to a promotions folder there's a number of things that can affect your um, your email, right? So, so understanding best practices, which there's a, a, a ton of them, right? It has to do with the content. It has to do the subject line. It has to do with text to image ratio. It has to do with bounce rates. There is a lot of things that people don't understand about email marketing. So then they take it under their own wing and they think that they're, they're doing a good job. But then of course they come and they say, well, I'm not getting any results. And then a lot of times I'll go in and I'll do an audit and I, I can pinpoint almost right away, right? Where they're making mistakes. Um, so I think if you're going to do email marketing, you really do need to understand all of the components that go into making sure it's optimized, making sure the content connects with your audience, right? And then there's another component that I, I like to say, okay, so, so everybody has a credit report, right? So you know that when you have credit, if you mess up in any way, um, it, affects your credit score, right? Your credit score drops. Well, it's the same thing with email. You have an email sending reputation. So if you're not doing something correctly, that affects your sending reputation, which also affects your domain. So it's really, really important that people understand what best practices are so that when they are starting with an email marketing um, strategy, that they, they're, they're starting out with that really firm foundation of, I understand what I need to do in order to have an optimized email marketing plan, a strategy, and how to connect with my audience through storytelling, through adding value. So, so many people, I think, 
they try to sell so much through email and they they lack the part where they're trying to connect with your audience, right? Just go back to that quote where it's, you know, social media is the cocktail party, email marketing is the meetup for coffee. It's that opportunity to connect with your audience. You you can personalize your emails with names, right? So the, the more that you can kind of like speak to your subscribers, um, the more you're going to see conversions and um, kind of grow your fan base. Yeah, yeah, no, it is, um, you know, you read all the time, you know, it, it, when you line up all the marketing tools that are out there and available, it's email is consistently near the top in as far as return on investment. And you know, when you're communicating with your loyal audience that already likes your business, they want to hear from you. It just makes sense if you execute on that uh, uh, and the content is good, like you said, it's educational. It's not always selling um, and, and thinking about, you know, if I can just get a, even a small percentage of this list to purchase the return on investment compared to the cost of executing email can be phenomenal. So, yes. It is a very, it is, it is, it makes sense from a marketing standpoint, you know, budget wise as well. So yes, absolutely. I agree with that. Well, I, uh, I know folks are out there probably thinking, you know, gosh, I I'm sitting on this email list. Maybe, you know, it, they haven't really used it as well as they, they should have in the past. Um, and, and they need someone to help them execute on that. So I, I definitely, it, somebody uh, who has a need, I know that Nikki and her team would be happy to help. Yes, and I am email marketing certified. So when I was talking about those best practices, we make sure that um, we are following those to a T so that you are really getting results from those emails. Well, cool. Well, as, as we start to wrap up here, um, you want to go over your sort of special offer again, Nikki? Yeah, so we did touch on SEO um, very much in here, but but I think this is a really important component. So SEO is search engine optim optimization, right? It's how your business gets found. So I think, you know, email marketing is great. Social media is great. But if you have a beautiful website, but nobody can find you, you have a marketing problem, right? So SEO, basically, there's on page and off page SEO. And this really helps the search engines, right? That, that it helps people find you. Um, if you don't have an SEO plan, that social media, the email marketing is kind of all for naught, right? So what my company can do is run some audits to make sure that your on-page and off-page SEO is performing. So that includes how fast your site is loading, right? Because Google wants to know, you know, Google ranks you basically on how your how fast your site loads. Um, there's organic SEO as far as Google My Business. So what we do is we run two comprehensive audits to make sure that you are you are optimized so that people are able to find your business. So it's a complimentary offer. Um, it, it has been a game changer for a lot of my clients that had no idea that they did not have any SEO built into their website. They weren't doing any SEO on, you know, off page SEO. So this has been really, really helpful for people um, to kind of build that foundation for their business. Yeah, it's critical. You know, I always, when I think of SEO and, and let's face it, we're talking about activity on Google. That's where it's happening. Those guys have a dominant market share. And when you think about somebody in your market right now is sitting at their keyboard, typing in those keywords, which means so much to your business, it's just natural that you want to show up in that search because here's a consumer basically raising their hand saying, I want what you have. And so that's like, to me, it's the same thing as having the lights turned on in your business every day, having your phone turned on. If you're not getting found in search, you're just missing a huge uh, segment of the market that's looking for your business. So right this is exactly great, great offer yes well and i want to mention too is is if you've spent a lot of time into building a beautiful website but nobody can find it right <laughs> then you need seo <laughs> right well and i know that's been you know for the past few years it was a, a trend everybody was hustling to get their website in a shape where it was mobile friendly that people on their smartphones could enjoy the website like they did on the desktop but yeah. what we've seen, and I know you've seen it, Nikki, is uh, these websites were built, but they really didn't pay attention to the SEO. It was more about design. And right. um, it, it's always compared to, it's like creating the world's best TV commercial, but never playing it for anyone. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, what's the point? So. Exactly. 
Well, this has been great, Nikki. And it, if, if someone is ready to, to connect, what, what's the best first step to get the audit, to, to start to, to work with your business? What, what should they do next? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you can um, go to our website site, excuse me, and um, connect with me that way. Um, website is www.wellspringbusiness, W-E-L-L springbusiness, all one word, dot com. Um, otherwise, you can email me, Nikki, N-I-C-K-I at wellspringbusiness.com and just mention free SEO um, audit in the subject line along with your business name, website URL, and contact information, and we can get started on that complimentary SEO audit for you. Cool, cool. I know those are those can get turned around in a matter of a, a day or two, and uh, it really can give you good insight into what's going on with your website. Yes. Well, super. Well, I've enjoyed this conversation as always, Nikki. When I chat with you, I learn something new, and uh, uh, now I know uh, you know I need to pay more closer attention to the signs when I'm out running a 5K. Uh, <laughs> but also the how email marketing can really help your business. So uh, I think we'll, we'll call it a podcast, but thanks so much for your time today. And thanks to everyone for, for listening. Thank you so much, Daryl. Okay. We'll talk again soon. Bye-bye right. for now. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to In the Weeds with Wellspring. If your business needs assistance with the website, getting found in search, email, or social media marketing, we're standing by to help. Visit us online at www.wellspringbusiness.com for more information.